Chapter 6, We Folk Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a-hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. William Allingham. Watch out, the fairy folk are about. They go by many names, fairies, goblins, elves, leprechauns, brownies, trolls. Some wear green, some wear bright red caps. When the Celts became Christians, they hated to give up their old ways. They had always thought there were spirits in forests and hills, caves and rocks. The country folk still believed in these spirits, but they began to think of them as little people. They were not as powerful as the old gods and goddesses, but they were magical. And Halloween was their special holiday time. Anyone who saw them would have a strange adventure. Some were good folk. They tried to help humans. Some were full of mischief. They liked to play tricks. Others were evil and did much harm. The wee folk loved music and dancing. Their music had special magic on Halloween. Some people who heard it went to sleep for a long, long time. Some followed the music, and some began dancing, unable to stop. There is a story told in Wales about fairy music. A farmer liked music, and he liked adventure. One day he took his fiddle and set out. It was all Hallow's Eve. The farmer came to a cave. He heard music and followed the music inside. He was not seen for a long time. Many years passed. A shepherd passed the cave on another Halloween night. He looked in and saw the home of the little people. In the middle of a fairy circle sat the farmer, still playing his fiddle. Anyone who finds this cave on Halloween will see him. The Irish especially believed in little people. They thought leprechauns lived in Ireland. The leprechauns were full of mischief. If you met one, he had to grant you a wish. You were never to take your eyes off him, though. If you did, he would trick you. An old folktale tells about Tom, an Irish boy who met a leprechaun one day. Follow me, the little man said. I'll lead you to a pot of gold. The leprechaun led, and Tom followed. Over hills and valleys they went. Then the leprechaun pointed to a bush. Dig there. I'll run home for a spade, Tom said. I'll tie a red garter on the bush to mark it. He ran home and back as fast as he could and could hardly believe his eyes. Every bush in the field was tied with a red garter. The leprechaun has tricked me, Tom said. I should not have taken my eyes off of him. Goblins could be helpful around the house, but they were full of pranks. They wrapped on walls and banged pots and pans. They moved furniture in the night. Goblins punished children when they disobeyed. The goblins will get you, parents would say. Goblins sometimes stole babies and left little goblins in their places. The mothers had to trick the goblins into bringing their babies back. Brownies and elves were helpful. There were many stories about them. An old man and his wife had no children to help with their housework. The brownies decided to help. Every night they came and worked and danced and sang. They skipped back home before daylight. One night the old man and his wife peeped. They saw that the brownies needed new clothes. We'll make some, they decided. They sewed little brown suits and caps. On Halloween night they put the new clothes out. How happy the brownies were. They put on their new clothes, but never came back because someone had seen them. Chapter 7 Halloween Customs from Many Lands Most Halloween customs came from the land of the Celts. This includes England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and part of France. The Druid religion lasted longest in Ireland and Scotland. Halloween was most important in these two. At first, Halloween celebrations were filled with fear of evil spirits. People were afraid to be alone, so they gathered in groups. Some they wore costumes. They hoped the evil spirits would think they were other spirits and leave them alone. Later, people began to have good times so they would forget about the spirits. 
The gatherings became merrier and merrier. Only grown-ups had this fun. Children joined in later. Finally, they took over the holiday for themselves. The Celts carried a light if they went out on October 31st. Lights kept away evil spirits. The lights were lanterns carved out of big turnips. In later years, children carved grinning faces on the turnips. Some called them bogies. Some called them jack-o'-lanterns. The name jack-o'-lantern is from an old Irish story. Once there was a man who was named Jack. He was mean, stingy, and tricky. When he died, he was too mean to go to heaven. He went to the devil. The devil threw Jack a piece of burning coal. Put this inside your turnip you are eating, he told Jack. This will be your lantern. Jack is still walking with his lantern, looking for a place to stay. The Irish country folk liked Halloween parades. They went begging in the name of Muck Ola. This was the name of old druid gods. The parade leader wore a white robe and a horse head mask. The people stopped to beg at each farmhouse. Much Ola will be good to you if you help us, they said. The farmer and his wife would give them food. Scotland and many of the Irish customs had some of their own. Families paraded about the fields and villages with burning torches. These kept the fields and animals safe from witches and other spirits. They lighted big hillside fires as the druids had done. Each family tried to have the biggest bonfire. Some they put on the weird masks. They danced and sang around the fire. Burn the witches, they chanted. When the last spark died out, they ran down the hill shouting, The devil gets the last one down. Cabbage and kale played a big part in the Scottish Halloween. Children piled cabbage and kale stalks around the doors and windows of their homes. They believed this made the fairies bring a new baby. The people in Wales also built Halloween fires. Their celebration was not quite as gay. They thought about death. Each person in the family marked a white stone and threw it into the fire. Then they marched around the fire praying. In the morning, each went to get his stone. If a stone was missing, there was a great sadness. The spirits were showing that this person would die soon. In England, Halloween was nicknamed Nutcrack Night or Snap Apple Night. Families sat before the fire to roast nuts and eat apples. They told stories and played games. Most of their games used apples and nuts, which were plentiful then. On All Souls Day, the poor went begging. They called this going a souling. Housewives gave special treats called soul cakes. The soulers promised to say prayers for the dead. After many years, this custom changed. Children were the only ones begging. Housewives gave them apples, buns, and money. The children chanted, Soul, soul, an apple or two. If you haven't an apple, a pear will do. An apple or a pear or a plum or a cherry. Anything good to make us merry. One for Peter, two for Paul, three for the man who made us all. Up with the kettle and down with the pan. Give us good alms and we'll be gone. Some countries celebrated just All Saints Day and All Souls Day and not Halloween. Their customs were much like Halloween, though. In France, a bellman went around the streets just before midnight. Go inside, he warned the people. The spirits are about to arrive. Everyone went to bed with his eyes shut tight. No one wanted to see those midnight visitors. French children now beg for flowers on October 31st. They use them to decorate churches and graves. In Mexico, cakes and toys are set out on the evening before, All Saints Day. These are for the dead children of the families. Some parents shoot firecrackers before their homes. They are to light the way for the souls of the dead children. All Souls Day is an important national holiday in Mexico. It is called the Day of the Dead. Bakers will sell dead men's bread in the shape of skulls. Children buy toy skeletons and coffins. They eat candy skulls, candy coffins, and candy funeral wreaths. It is a strange but happy time. Picnic parties visit the graves. 
all is done on a holiday spirit.